Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to show off a regenerative radio receiver design that I built over the past couple of days. The design I got from www.funwithtubes.net. I altered the schematic in some ways, but for the most part, it's the same thing. I'll go over my test code real quick to show you what I'm working with. This is an audio amplifier I made. It has a 7Y4 rectifier tube, a 6SL7 preamp and phase splitter, and a 6SN7 as the power output. It's operated in class AB1. This speaker I made out of a salvage speaker from an alarm clock radio and a flower pot. It gets all right sound and it does the trick. Plus it cost me about two dollars to make. This power supply used to be a VCR. I stripped everything out of it and replaced it with run-of-the-mill parts I had in my junk boxes. It provides 6.3 volts for the heaters with a capacity of up to 3 amps and the B plus can be changed from 100 volts to about 250 volts. This is my radio chassis. I had some sheet metal workers make it for me. The tube you see there is the radio coil. I wound wire on a PVC pipe that's two inches inner diameter. The outer diameter works out to be maybe two and a quarter inches or somewhere in that neighborhood. The capacitor has three gangs. I salvaged it from an old <coughs> All-American 5 radio that I got at a flea market. The back plates are the oscillator plates and the front two are for tuning probably a TRF type configuration on the front end. Eventually, I'm going to make this into a TRF configuration, but for now, it's just a regen. I have three tube sockets here. Two are the seven-pin minis that you see empty, and the nine-pin is occupied here by my EM80. It's actually a 6E1 Pi, which is a Russian version, but it's pretty much the same thing. For an antenna, you see right here, I just have running up and down. It receives well enough, but it's 22 gauges. 22 gauge copper wire and I'd say it's about 20 feet long. Usually I run it down the hallway but I have it stretched out here just so my wife's cat doesn't play with it. Also you see two pots mounted on the chassis. Underneath there's nothing special it's just terminal strips, capacitors and other components. I have a copper bus wire mounted on wood blocks right there that way I can isolate the negative return of the DC from the chassis. That's about it. Now let's fire her up. Alright. I'm going to turn on the heater supplies for the radio and I'm going to turn on the audio amp and let it sit for a second just so the filaments can warm up. Right here I have my multimeter. I can show that the heater supply maintains a very very close to 6.3 now possibly inside the tube you can see the cathode I can't see it myself so I'm going to assume you can't either the cathode should be warming up here shortly then I can turn on the B plus immediately you see that the tube begins to glow. So, I'm going to adjust my B plus supply for it's about 196 right now. Put it at about 201. That works. Now, to play with it a bit. First, you can see the glowing screen. This is a magic eye tube and it behaves accordingly. This part right here I have connected to the region. Basically it's in parallel with the cathode resistor and I can play with the resistance to be able to receive it's the region control. The local station 1620 takes up most of the upper half of this tuning because it's about half a mile down the road and they have their transmitter on full blast. Regrettably this doesn't get much more than that.
Transportation Corporation. For more information on radios like this, go to www.frontwithtubes.net. It's where I learned to build things like this. Thank you.